What's up, everybody? It's your favorite Transformers favorite nerd. And today we are looking at the X Trans bots Death Wish, which is their dead end. The reason why I say favorite Transformers favorite nerd is because, for those that don't know, this is my favorite Transformer. It's my favorite character. And I think as a result, this toy will probably always have a special place with me because it's the first kind of proper MPG-1 dead end I've ever owned, which is pretty cool. I got this along with Drag Strip from Titan One Toys. Now I'm gonna shout them out and East Coast Toys, and I'll tell you why. I made this order with Titan One. They contacted me and told me that they were going to be significantly delayed. They then advised me to go ahead and buy it somewhere else so that it wouldn't slow down any potential momentum for my channel, which was very very thoughtful of them. I, however, am a man of my word. So I just dealt with the delay and waited to get them, which is why it took so long to get the review up. Now, the reason why I say I'm shouting out East Coast Toys is because there was some confusion on my end on who I was getting the drag strip from, and they were very lenient with me, very understanding. So shout out to them. They're carrying it. Titan One is also carrying it. I think these are the final Titan One pieces that he's carrying. So send him out of here in good fashion. And if he's sold out, hit up East Coast Toys, etc., etc. Now, this guy does come with a few accessories. Let's take a look at them. So it comes with two side mirrors and they're just black plastic, uh, which is nice that they're removable just in case they should, you know, be damaged during handling the figure. It's nice that they're kind of designed to kind of come in and out, so to speak. And they simply just plug in to this side here by the, by the side windows. Uh, they don't stay in great, but whatever. It's okay, I guess. He also comes with these two spoiler pieces, which I'm counting as an accessory because they were loose in the box, so they didn't stay plugged in if they were meant to be plugged in. If they weren't meant to be plugged in, they weren't packaged well. So either way, there's an issue there, but they had the same finish on them, and they plug in to the back of the vehicle. Now, the nice thing about this, much like the, the, the side mirrors, is that this is something that can be broken um, on toys or, you know, transformer type figures, if not done quite right. So the fact that they're designed to kind of come loose rather than break is a nice touch. He also comes with a firearm, metallic paint. I know that uh, if you can forgive it, only if you can forgive it. I know it's a hot button these days. We, we, I know how it is. But if you can forgive it, it's on there, and I think it looks fantastic. Uh, this sculpt is a little weird, but I'm good with it ultimately. Now that can plug in directly into the back of the vehicle, and he'll hold the gun, but it is a little tricky to kind of get it in there, so to speak. You just have to make sure that everything is exactly right for it to work clearance-wise. So let's talk about vehicle mode. Rolls like a champ. We have the red metallic paint. I know that's a hot button after Saturday's video, but it does have it, and most people seem okay with it on this figure. They're, they pick and choose, I get it. And then we have some yellow paint and red paint accents for brake lights, turn signals, that sort of stuff. The exhaust is painted silver, looks great. The hubcaps are painted silver. The tires uh, are rubber, which is nice. And then we have the little Porsche symbol there. I think this is supposed to be a 928. I'm no car guy, what, you know. Um, what am I, Fast and Furious? Uh, but anyway, and then we got a little bit of added paint details down there. Cleans up well underneath, little peekaboo, but cleans up well underneath. I think it's a pretty well done thing. As we've already kind of talked about, the, the side mirrors do have a tendency to pop off, but better they pop off and be able to be put back on than break off, am I right? I think I might be. And then we have the kind of black, um, it's like a really, really dark, like barely translucent, translucent, and I think that looks fantastic. The one issue we had to talk about, right, is the racing stripe. I think it should have been there. Why wasn't it there? I'm guessing they left it off because it's not in the cartoon. But I do feel like it's like his signature thing. But I suppose if you're going for hypertune accuracy, you would prefer it be off. So I forgive it, but I am like, man, I don't know. I do like those racing stripes. Size comparison wise, there he is with drag strip. And drag strip does seem a little big to me. Like he does seem a little long, so to speak. But it's a it's a small price to pay, I think. And it's definitely a personal taste. And of course, there he is with Tiger Tracks just about in line. And as you can also see, Tiger Tracks is a little bit shorter than uh, drag strip. Now let's get it transformed. So the first thing we're gonna do is hope and pray we don't break it the way we broke Wild Rider by bending here in half. We're good to go. Now we need to get the hood popped. So we're gonna pop once, twice, three times a lady. Split the arms from the inside and then break them away from the side panel here. You can use anything that you can to sort of make that happen. Get them up and out of the way, and you're gonna to wanna to do that on both sides. And my head just popped off the ball joint there. Up and out of the way. Now, fold in the side windows, a little tight, on both sides. 
bring these pieces that are at the top out and these pieces in and we're going to bring the bottom pieces up and the top pieces down they're both on sliding rails and they're both toleranced fairly well bring those back around and encapsulate the two side doors for the shoulders bring them down into a position that makes sense obviously then rotate them around you want to bring the make sure the fist is up and the forearm piece is down so that it closes and encapsulates the fist and I know that got a little bit off camera we'll try to do it a bit better on this side so we're gonna bring it down we're going to make sure that the fist is up and the forearm piece is down so that both pieces will wrap around and encapsulate the fist for the backpack take the front hood spin it around 180 bit of a tight tolerance and bring this piece up which is going to plug in to the back of the shoulders there and then this piece comes down and grips the rest of the backpack so that stays intact and then you can turn the hips 180. Flip these bottom pieces down, split the legs, use this as a lever and then you can bring down the entire section out and around. So we'll do that again use this as a lever and then just work through the clearance clearance of bringing this down and around now there's a lot of steps to this but it's fairly intuitive in hand bring this piece around so that it kind of covers up a bit this piece has to come down this piece has to flip to the inside the foot has to come down obviously which we probably should have done before we flipped the tire and this comes in tabs in on the bottom you can rotate this piece down and this piece out and that's one leg done one more time for the kids who spent most of their elementary school in the resource room like I did flip this piece out flip this piece down flip the foot down flip the tire to the inside bring this whole section around bring the foot up bring the heel out and this piece comes down I'll get them cleaned up we'll take a look at them so the head we have gold paint and purple paint on the visor they're both metallic the head is on a ball peg that gets you a ton of range but it's not the best connection as you saw in the transformation it pops off very easily and it's very loose there's also a, a swivel down here where the neck connection that holds the ball peg attaches to the body so I would imagine that this isn't the way they intended to do it at first and that might be part of the problem but I'm not entirely sure either way that's an issue the shoulders we have a hinge Oh, you don't really get it anymore because of the backpack wait no you should get this one all right so you have a soft ratcheted hinge there and then you have an additional hinge there I'm not sure you'd even need the soft ratcheted one because the regular hinge gets you up a great range then you have the swivel so this piece here acts as a universal joint we have a bicep swivel and then we have a double hinged elbow that gets you a great run red metallic paint on the forearm red plastic on the bicep same for the other side the wrist swivel and then the fingers are on a base pin knuckle all the fingers are attached on the same pin for the waist we have a metallic gray and then we have a flat gray and then we have a white paint so tons of paint on this guy you get a waist swivel that gets you the full range and then you get an ab crunch on a soft ratchet that gets you far over more so than you'd ever need not a lot back 
This guy does split in half for combiner purposes, but we're not going to really cover that today, are we? So we have hip skirts. They get up and out of the way at the front and back. This one popped off. This one does have a little bit of that X Transbot swag to it, like where stuff like the head not being fit on right, and then these things popping off. Like it has a little bit of that old school X Transbot swag to it, but then it has a little bit of fans toy swag here. But you do get the full Van Dam, or rather the full Monty. And then I believe you get the full Van Dam as well. And these are just tension universals with a great range. Now, I will say one thing that's off-putting, and I understand why, obviously, because of the engineering of the figure. But it is a little off-putting to me with the metallic uh, paint here that goes into the almost purpley looking. Like, it doesn't match well. And it is off-putting to me. Can't, can't really tell you why. Uh, it's definitely one of those things that, you know, your mileage may vary. But that's how I feel about it. All right, so we have a thigh swivel, as you see, built into the bottom of the universal, which I, which I like. And then we have a double hinged uh, knee, but you really only get to use one joint of it. And be cautious, while it's soft ratchet, I mean, while it is, it is ratcheted, rather, you get 90 degrees, which is fine. When you have the spoiler plugged in, if you don't use just the top one, the spoiler will give you an issue. If you use just the top one, the spoiler won't cause you any trouble and you don't really get any additional range by having the two joints. So I wouldn't sweat it, just be cautious and use the top joint. Ankles, as you saw basically in the transformation, you get the tilt down and up and a rocker. So no issues there, and then you can use this heel spur kind of bit or this bit to help stabilize the figure in a more dynamic pose. So all of that works well. And then we have the backpack and the back, which I think is kind of good enough. Uh, the, the backpack does seem a little wide. Like, I don't like how, how much you get to see from the front, but, uh, you know, I've seen worse. You know what I mean? And I like the silver paint underneath there, like little added accents. Like, and with the arms down or in a regular kind of pose, you know, or even like turn to the side or whatever, I don't think you'll have any issue with it. Not the cleanest, but not the worst is basically what I'm getting at. Overall, pretty good figure. This button right here is what releases. The, we'll talk about that later. Size comparison wise, there he is with the other two. I'd say that's pretty much as perfect as it gets. And with Road King, who's in a much wider A stance. So the reason why I'm doing this, I've seen people take pictures with all of them with Road King. And while I know the excitement of wanting to put them all together, I just think it's too much of a stretch between the two size-wise. That's my own personal opinion. You know how I feel. Scale is in the eye of the beholder. Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. Subjectively, I wish it had that yellow paint in car mode. I know that varies person to person, I get it. So if they're going for strictly tune accuracy, I can understand how they wouldn't want it to be there. I think the head engineering was rethought, which is why it is the way it is. I wish it gave you a little bit more downward movement as well, and I wish it was better tolerance. There's a few of those things along the way where stuff just isn't quite as smooth as maybe they have gotten recently, especially with the Crack Rock Beige breakdown. And the difference in the color, between the hips and upper thighs to the lower thighs is off-putting to me. Positives wise though, there's plenty. There's die cast parts, the materials feel good, the engineering is great, it's fun, it's intuitive, it doesn't break. The articulation is all there. I'm not sure if you'd want any more, except for maybe a little downward motion in the head. The sculpt work is great, so to speak, by the way. I love the metallic paint, I just wanna stress that again. Consistency. But there's also some variations in the paint. We got some gloss paint, metallic paint, and even some flat paint. All of those things things help bring a very dynamic presence to the figure on a shelf for display purposes. It's reasonably priced. The hardware is decent. Could be a little better, but it's decent. And the tolerances are holding up just fine for the tension, for all of the sliding bar engineering aspects and the articulation aspects. And I think it has a good presence in beautiful alt mode. So it's definitely a strong recommend from me if you're into the scale or into the line, etc., etc. Thanks again to Titan One. Thanks again to East Coast Toys and thank you for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.